Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about pines. What I'd like to do is to cover these three trees uh, because each of these trees are at very different phases or stages of their development. I speak to a number of people or a number of people ask me questions about pines. For some, they are a little bit confused as to when to apply what technique. The case of Japanese black pine or two needle pines, it seems to be very much the case that there is confusion, particularly when it comes to whether <clears throat> your tree should be decandled or not. And I'm not referring to the health of the tree, whether it can be or not, uh, but simply whether to apply the technique of decandling. Uh, and so I hope to, in today's talk, uh, address that and several other questions that com commonly uh, prop up. Let me start with this pine uh, because it's the youngest of the three trees that I will use as examples of stages of development. So we're going to, I'm going to talk about three different phases um, uh, that you are likely to, to encounter. Uh, this tree I planted as a seed. It was then treated as a cutting and then developed uh, using different techniques and then planted on this, uh, this rock. It's now four years old and um, it is still obviously and clearly still very much under development. So what do we use to, what am I using? What are the techniques that I'm using to develop this tree? Well, the first one and the most obvious one is this very long apical uh, branch. This is ultimately going to be removed. So you, you, you know, forget about what it looks like. Um, the longer and the thicker this gets, the longer and thicker the base or the trunk will become. So at this point in time, my primary goal is to fatten up the trunk. Uh, to give an interesting trunk, of course, uh, but to give a fat trunk. So the interest in the trunk will be achieved by making multiple cuts in this. The first curve, so to speak, in the trunk would be created when this escape branch or sacrifice branch is cut and one of the lower branches are then brought up and in the position to replace this escape branch. And every time and then ultimately that one would be cut. And so every time you cut, you change direction in the trunk and this gives you the movement and obviously taper as well because this first cut will be left until the trunk is uh, fairly thick. You know, it's sort of, I would imagine about two thirds of the thickness that you actually ultimately want will be when this is removed. Uh, and then subsequent thickening will take place through successive uh, sac sacrifice branches that are then developed and cut. Now I don't want to do, talk too much into detail about the process of each of these because the idea is mainly to focus on the more common techniques um, that would be appropriate for the different stages of the tree's development. So one of the things that you would notice is that this area is fairly bare until it gets to higher up where you then again find needles. Now these needles have been cut to allow the maximum amount of sunlight into the base or the basal area of the tree. And that is to ensure that the buds that are growing in this area or the little branchlets that are growing will remain strong. If this was all bushy needles, it's going to shade this out and then you're going to start having running into problems because you need to ensure that this growth down here is strong because this, as I mentioned, is all going to get cut off. And so you need to make sure that you've got growth that you can actually develop the tree with further. Now, another thing that you will notice, it's a bit difficult because there's a lot of needles in the way, but you'll see there's another branch running out here. And that is also a sacrifice branch because that is going to be used to fat, help to fatten up this trunk. So a lot of these branches, this branch, 
and this branch is going to be removed, uh, ultimately be, be removed once they have served their purpose. But for the moment, they, because of the sap that's flowing into the branches, that sap is causing the tree to become thicker because obviously to accommodate the sap flow, there needs to be more wood. But now, and this is very important, is these the little buds here, these little branchlets have developed from adventitious buds where there were once needles, and you'll see there's a lot of them over here. Now those have developed as a result of the strength of the tree. The, the tree is healthy, and so now you get these buds forming. And where, if this is allowed to become stronger, ultimately this would more than likely make a very good substitute for the sacrifice branch that is growing right next to it. What will also be good about it is that, that that cut that would be made then will be towards the back of the tree. And so you won't see it. So keeping this alive and getting this stronger and ultimately getting it strong enough so that this can be removed um, is, is my goal. So at this point in time, there is no talk of decandling because that would be counterproductive. You want as much elongation happening in the branches as possible. So what techniques in summary have we uh, have I covered in, in developing this stage of material? So this is where you've got a young plant that you're trying to thicken up the trunk and uh, you are developing the trunk and the branches will come a little bit later. But so, so the techniques will be pretty much the same um, when you get to that point as well. So we using, I'm using sacrifice branches. I'm cutting some needles on those sacrifice branches to ensure that there's light on the interior of the tree, that there's a lot of sunlight getting to those buds. And because the tree is, uh, is vigorous, uh, it is going to give me growth low down on the tree. Now it is important to also mention that if um, if you had a candle extension, uh, so when your candle extends in spring, it grows and then you'll start getting needles coming out at a point. Now the neck of the candle is the distance or the, the piece of material or growth that it results uh, or is there before you get to the needles. It's all part of the candle, so it all extends in spring. Um, but the, the neck is the piece of material that is before you actually get needles. Now it's important to note or mention that I mentioned to you that if uh, on the neck you will never get any uh, needles, uh, never, never get any buds forming. Uh, no advent, uh, adventitious buds, no needle buds, no, no any kind of bud. Uh, so it's important, that's why uh, for this tree, knowing that I was going to be doing root over rocks with them, it was important for me to ensure that I had growth very low down on the tree. So I used the seedling cutting method to make sure that I had reduced that the length of the, the stem of the plant, the young plant, the seedling, uh, to as short as possible so that I had that chance of getting buds forming very low down on the tree. And it's those buds, so some of them I'm using as sacrifice branches uh, and some of them I'm keeping weak, I'm sort of controlling those and they will be used to ultimately form the structural branches of the tree. But at this stage, I'm not using, I'm not doing any decandling, I'm not needle plucking to allow light, uh, but I may use needle plucking or even cutting. Most of these needles are just cut, it's, it's far quicker, or you can just pull them off with your fingers. You don't need to use a pair of tweezers, but you may use, uh, you may need to remove some of the needles, the older needles on the interior of the tree yeah, just to ensure that it doesn't become sort of congested with old needles because you might get pests uh, making that their home as well. But more again, just to make sure that there's a bit of circulation, air circulation in there, and also that those shoots uh, remain healthy. And then in winter, you're going to cut the sacrifice branch off. 
I'm not going to, or when you just, when it's done, it's fulfilled its purpose, you're then going to cut it off. Be careful not to remove too many sacrifice branches at the same time. You do need to reduce it. So maybe if you've got a long, you know, meter, two meter long sort of sacrifice branch, don't just cut the whole thing off. You might want to reduce it in phases because you can actually kill the entire tree. I have done it, so I'm speaking from experience. We all make our mistakes and that's how we learn. So there's nothing wrong with that. But I think I've covered uh, the main, the key points with this tree. I'm, I may use a little bit of wire just to position branches more or less where I want it to be. But my focus is on the development of the trunk at this stage and not on structural branches or any kind of idea with branches. I don't have any idea of where the branches are going to be at this stage. Uh, that's not a primary concern because I can always get, I, I know that in time I will get more buds forming, more growth forming. So I'm not too worried about that now. If you however neglect this growth down at, in the basal area of the tree, then you're going to sit with the problem of either having to redesign the tree so that you don't have branches low down or you're going to have to graft. Um, alternatively, if you can again get the, the health of the tree up, uh, then you can, you stand the chance of getting buds to, to form of course, provided that that area is not the neck of a candle, at, uh, that it wasn't the neck of a candle at some, at some point. Okay, so that's tree number one. That's the youngest of the three trees that I'm going to be referring to. So the next tree that I want to talk about is a akamatsu or Japanese red pine. So Japanese red pine is also a two needle pine, uh, the same as Japanese black pine or kuramatsu. Uh, so you treat them very much the same. Uh, there are subtle differences, uh, but it is not important for today's discussion. It is more about uh, watering and fertilizing because they are very much more responsive to that than um, Japanese black pines. They are very, the Japanese red pine is a very strong grower. Um, so this tree has a little bit of history and I think uh, why I wanted to use it is because you might encounter something similar to this. Uh, I bought this, in fact, I imported uh, this tree a uh, number of years ago from Japan and then I styled it and sold it to a customer. This customer due to work commitments was unable to give the tree the attention uh, that it required and therefore was not able to perform the, the functions or the, the techniques, the work, the maintenance work that needed to be done uh, at, at particular times. He was unable to do that and as a result of that the tree became quite weak and it also became very leggy. And uh, so this is the type of scenario that you might encounter if you find a tree in somebody's collection uh, who maybe didn't know how to look after it or maybe it was sickly. It's a, it's a sort of a deceased estate kind of tree um, or it might be a tree that uh, you find in the nursery and it's been neglected. And so now you need to know uh, what to do with it if you've bought it already or maybe if you're thinking about buying it but you're not too sure what the implications are going to be. You can actually produce um, buds on a tree, on a pine, two needle pine specifically, um, by allowing the tree to develop. So it becomes strong and as it becomes stronger it actually produces the back buds that you want. But with this tree it was weak and it, it, it lacked interior buds and uh, because it had been allowed to become leggy because the, the, there was no needle. It was a refined tree at one stage basically. And so by neglecting it or not, let's say, put it nicely, by not applying the right techniques at the right time, the tree was allowed to become leggy because light was unable to penetrate into the tree and the candles were just allowed to extend and they were not pruned back. So there was successive years of growth without any decandling that took place. As a result of me fertilizing the tree quite heavily and putting it into full sun, and allowing it to build up vigor. I didn't repot it. It's in the same container, same soil that it's been for probably the last four or five years already. Um, 
just by giving it a lot of fertilizer and a lot of sunlight, I have been able to reinvigorate this tree once again. And you'll see that there's actually now a, quite a number of buds that have developed. And these buds started to develop last season, in fact, uh, but they were too weak at that point in time to actually cut the branches back to those buds. But now I then thinned out some of the needles, not a lot, um, and but then I was able to strengthen those buds. And so now many of them are actually strong enough to be cut back to. So now I can get, I can eradicate the legginess of the branches uh, as being a problem. I can eliminate that. So this is an example of a cut that I was able to make. You can see how much stronger these buds have become over the course of this season. But these buds were never there. This branch was quite a lot longer. But as a, as a result of the tree becoming stronger, so in, in allowing the branches to extend, not decandling, but allowing the branches to extend, as I will show you some of the other branches that have been allowed to extend, then after that extension took place and the tree was uh, was strong enough and had had uh, sort of let's say excess energy it was then able to produce these back buds and these back buds were not produced by decandling it was just through through the tree becoming healthy enough that those buds formed of their own accord when they were strong enough i was then able to cut this branch back and now these buds are becoming even stronger and eventually they will lengthen. So I'm not going to decandle that, of course, it's too short. But these other branches could be cut and I'm going to just demonstrate that as well to you. So yeah, we have another very good example of a branch that had become leggy and was to some extent useless in the structure of the tree. So again, by allowing the tree to become quite strong. You can see there's a lot of growth in this area here. By allowing it to become stronger, it's now pushed out two buds here. So I can, at this point in time, go in and prune that off. And so now I have shortened the branch quite considerably. In fact, I think it would be fine to actually cut this branch even further back and cut it back to that point. So now I have effectively reduced the branch by uh, two thirds, really. And now I can use this. So I'm not going to decandle this growth. I can now use this growth to now build the, the structure, continue building the structure of the tree. Let me give you another instance. This branch also extremely leggy. You must remember a lot of this growth that's now on the tree uh, or on this branch uh, is as a result of me allowing it to grow. So it looks a lot healthier than it was when it first came back to me. But um, this, you can now see there is two buds. There are two buds that have formed as a, re a result of this branch becoming a lot stronger. But I'm uncomfortable at the moment of cutting back to these two buds because they're not strong enough. So I, can, I could potentially just remove some of the older needles, um, these older inner needles, but I'm not going to cut out the candle uh, of, of, the, of this, the spring candle of this season. So I'm going to leave that because that can be allowed to, to develop even further and get stronger. And that is just going to strengthen these buds at the base here. And obviously now that I've removed some needles, it will allow more sunlight into that area. One last example of a bud that has formed, possibly, no, it's probably formed last year. Maybe it was a spring, maybe this bud developed um, in late autumn and uh, then shot in spring or developed a little bit more in spring, I'm not sure. But this is definitely too weak to cut back to. But if I allow, once again, I remove some of the old needles, yeah, that could be shading it a little bit. Just remove some of those and then allow more sun in and this bud can get stronger. So possibly in spring, so, may, or, so in spring this will be strong enough to, to, to develop. Of, uh, and, and then I can cut this section out and this branch will be effectively much shorter. 
and the ramification greatly improved. Now here's a few examples of branches which have not formed any adventitious or new buds uh, or growth. Uh, so at this stage I'm not going to be able to cut back to them but I also don't want to decandle them because if I decandle them they're going to they, they're not going to have as much sap flow going into those branches as they are now. So I think the issue there is possibly just that it was not getting sufficient light uh, in, in, uh, into because these are the lower branches of the tree and uh, so that seems to make sense. So po possibly just the solution will be to thin the tree a little bit above it and to allow more sunlight to, it, to, to get to, the, to, to these parts of the tree. And so I've, do I've done a little bit of uh, work off camera on this tree, really just opening the structure up a little bit. I didn't, so with some of the candles where there was already interior growth that had de developed, I was able to cut back to that as I demonstrated on, on some places to you um, where there was no uh, buds that had de developed or, that, or where they were not strong enough. I didn't do anything with that branch. I'm allowing the candle to extend. Um, by allowing the candle to extend, the branch is going to become stronger. It will obviously thicken up, but it's not going to thicken up to such a point that you can't use it. Uh, because it's obviously only going to take another season or two at most in order to cut back to those buds that are forming. And then I also just thinned out the number of needles uh, to allow more sunlight to get into the interior of the tree. So um, the weak buds that are there will become stronger and hopefully in other areas where there are no buds, uh, buds will form on those areas as a result of the um, the additional sunlight. So that's it that I want to show you on the this tree. Obviously it's not an in-depth workshop on a particular tree and the styling thereof. It's more about the techniques that you can employ uh, when you encounter an, uh, a subject, a specimen like this that has been neglected or that has leggy branches you're not going to decandle it uh, as there is because you're wanting to promote the formation of inner buds. Um, and so there it's going to be a case of allowing the branches to become stronger by allowing those candles to develop and you're going to thin some of the needles and allow sunlight in to so, so you'll get the combination of the, the vigor of the branch with the sunlight being the ideal sort of circumstances in which buds can form. When those get strong enough, you can then cut the branch back to that. Get, uh, so you can treat this as one solution for uh, leggy branches. Um, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how that uh, uh, sometimes uh, even on a tree like this, which is uh, much older and the trunk is no longer a concern in terms of the development thereof, um, that you still would not or that uh, apply decandling or that you would apply decandling in a, um, on selected branches only and then the needle plucking as well. That it's not that the whole tree is being needle plucked, although even on some of the, the candles uh, that are strong enough, there you can reduce the amount of needles. Um, but it's not about balance, balancing the energy so much at this stage, because balancing energy is what is giving you um, equal needle length. And that is something that is more important when you're getting to a refined tree and particularly if you're wanting to exhibit the tree. But in this case the tree is still under development so it's, it's, it's not in stage one as in trunk development but I'm developing branches. So I'm, I'm kind of back to the structural branch stage. So this is maybe stage two of uh, the first tree that I showed you being stage one. This is now stage two. And now then let's go over to stage three to a refined tree. So this is the, uh, the third and final tree that I want to talk about in uh, today's session. Uh, this is a refined tree. So this tree is no longer under structural branch development anymore, but it's about building ramification. So increasing the amount of finer branches that I have. 
and it's about maintaining the, the growth that I have. Um, so at this stage, I'm not trying to fatten up branches, any particular structural branches, in which case if you were, if there was an area that was weak on the tree, I wouldn't be decandling that. I would be allowing it to grow stronger. And in order to do that, I would obviously not decandle it because the moment you do that, you're, you're essentially arresting the growth of that branch. So if I wanted to grow this area, if I felt it was too weak and I needed this to be stronger, I could do, I could allow the candles to, the spring candles to remain and decandle the rest of the tree, but keeping that. Or I might decide I want to decandle it, um, but I'm going to keep 10 pairs or 12 pairs of needles, whereas the rest of the tree I might have five or four pairs of needles. So in that way, the amount of sap that's being pulled into this branch is more. So these, I would say very subtle differences is what makes bonsai so interesting, certainly for myself, but also makes, makes it very confusing for, for others. Uh, and is also why, you know, you're never, you're going to encounter so many different variables. There isn't a step one, step two, step three scenario because there are just so many different variables that could influence which is the next step. And I would also say that there's, generally not going to be when you certainly when you get to this point um, there's not going to be a wrong and a right there's going to be something that perhaps gives a better or a less than optimal response from the tree tree if you apply the wrong technique uh, but obviously i'm now talking about uh, i mean i'm i'm uh, i'm saying you're not going to go do something stupid and cut the branch all the way back uh, thinking that it's going to back bud for instance like a deciduous tree would i am making some assumption as to the level of competency that you would have working on a tree at this point in time. So now on a tree like this you will find although that it was needle plucked in autumn down to I can't remember the number of pairs of needles it'll be easy to count them obviously because they would still be here uh, but let's just say it was five pairs of needles um, in, in this area, yeah. You'll still see that there is a variation in the size of the candle. So yeah, you can see this is, the, this is the neck that I was referring to. So you can see there's still needles, yeah. So this is the neck at the bottom there, um, but this is the size of the fully developed spring candle. But just next to it, you have a much weaker candle. So now there's quite a number of, uh, you'll find many different techniques um, that would address this. So obviously this tree would need to be decandled. Um, so this entire tree will be decandled. It is certainly strong enough to do it. So it's been well fertilized and watered until this point, And now it can be decandled. But now what you might want to do is, uh, there's, there's for instance two variations. On this candle that is stronger than this one, so on the on the weak, so you would find a weak, kind of the weakest candle on the tree, and then the strongest candle on the tree, and that would be your range. And then you would decide how much of a stub that you would leave on the on, on the candle. Um, so the weakest candle you would cut all the way right, right back to the to the old needles. And the, the, the strongest candle, you would leave a stub of a few millimeters, say five millimeters long. And the point of that is that the sap will first need to recede to die back in the neck of that candle before it gets to the needles. And then it would start to develop a bud. Whereas if you cut it all the way back down to the needles, to the, previous, to the pre previous season's needles, so to the autumn needles or summer, sorry, the summer needles of the previous season, growing season, if you cut it all the way back down, it immediately can start to form buds. So by doing, by allowing a stub or uh, uh, to remain, it, it, it really is a play for time. The alternative to doing this is that you would 
go through the entire tree and cut all the weakest candles and you would leave the strong candles and then you'd come back a week or two later. The timing is, is obviously down to experience, but you would then come back a week or two later and then you would remove the, the strong candles. And the reason for that is that it basically gives a head start to the, to the areas that had the weakest candles in it. They can start developing buds already and then by cutting the strongest candles the uh, last the buds will uh, for those at the base of those cuts will only start to develop two weeks or three weeks or whatever it is but i wouldn't go so long um, but two weeks let's say for instance um, after the first cuts that you made so that hopefully the ideal is that then the candles that will develop the summer candles that develop as a result of the decandling process they will be the same size. If you did your work in autumn correctly and you plucked needles or you pulled needles uh, down to whatever it might be, four pairs, five pairs, six pairs, ten pairs, whatever, um, you will then, then you will not have to pull needles now again. But if you didn't do that, then you're going to obviously have to pull the, uh, you might need to remove a number of needles after you've done the decandling um, uh, at, this, at this sitting. So after you've um, decandled your spring candles, you may then need to remove some needles as well. Sometimes you might find that you will leave more needles for the spring candles to develop with, perhaps because you felt that the tree was uh, needed to become a little bit stronger. Uh, but if the response was then too, too much, uh, you now might need to remove more needles. But this is now when needles is, uh, where the number of needles d determines to a large extent the size of the resulting candles that develop in summer and obviously the needles. Uh, the goal at this stage is to get the knee, a uniform needle length and obviously therefore a uniform candle length development as well. But this is now a refined tree. But now then what else is important with the tree of this, of this age? Now at this point when your tree is designed and developed and being refined, you don't want it to become any bigger. So when you uh, so now you so now the challenge becomes how to keep your tree the same size. Uh, so in other words, that the silhouette doesn't get any bigger. And this is when inner buds become very important as well. You can see here's a very strong candle extension, uh, and at the base of it, down here on more on the interior of this branch, you've got two buds that are developing, two two candles in fact. Um, they're still young, but they're strong enough to be cut back to. So this is very important because after years of, uh, of, of growing the tree, candles extending, cutting it back, the branches become thicker and thicker. So of, co of course they become coarse and that's not very nice. So you want, you want the branches to be quite delicate at the out outline, the, the silhouette of, of the tree. And so you need to make sure that you've got these inner buds that you can cut branches back into and then redevelop the branch with these inner buds. So allowing the candles to extend, um, keeping the tree healthy, uh, not starving the tree, uh, you will get these kind of, this kind of growth uh, developing. And when you do, it's very important that you ensure that those uh, remain healthy by uh, also, uh, well, it's kind of, a dual purpose, the needle pulling. So the needle pulling, as I mentioned, um, helps to balance the energy of the tree uh, to get equal needle length and to get, uh, you know, to, to, to resolve weak, weaker areas of the tree, get them stronger again. But it also allows light into the interior of the tree so that buds like this can develop and also become stronger. And that brings me to the end of this talk on the appropriate use of different techniques uh, that are commonly associated with pines, including decandling and needle plucking, uh, because it is something that very often I find people try to apply to trees that are either too young or too weak uh, 
for it actually to be safely applied and to actually achieve the results that the that the grower or the enthusiast is trying to achieve. So anyway, I hope that um, you have a better idea of how and where uh, these techniques are frequently applied. Um, obviously, there are other scenarios. I've just given you three different ones, um, but I hope this helps anyway. And uh, by all means, if you have any questions, do um, uh, just comment below. And um, yes, if you haven't subscribed and liked my channel, please do so now. And then uh, when I post uh, more videos in the future, you'll be notified. But thanks very much for watching and take care until next time. Goodbye.